To introduce the concepts of molecular geometry, we will first focus on the carbon atom. Your instructor will often draw the sp3, sp2, and sp hybridized carbon on the whiteboard as shown. The solid lines in these drawings are in the plane of the board, the wedges are coming out of the plane of the board, and dash lines are going back behind the plane of the board. Thus, the student should be able to visualize these hybrid building blocks in three dimensions, as shown to deduce the ideal bonding angles between different atoms. 109.5 degrees for sp3, 120 degrees for sp2, and 180 degrees for sp. An easy way to deduce hybridization of a central atom is to count groups around the atom. A group is defined as another atom or a lone pair. When an atom is surrounded by four, three, or two groups, it will adopt the sp3, sp2, or sp hybridization, respectively. A helpful way to remember this is by adding the exponents together, and that should equal the number of groups around the hybridized atom. For sp3, the exponents add to four. Thus, an sp3 atom has four groups. For sp2, the exponents add to three. Thus, a sp2 hybridized atom has three groups around it. These hybrid building blocks allow the respective number of groups to be as far apart as possible. Although we will use the abbreviated hybridized building blocks shown here for subsequent examples, it is important to recall the actual shape of the unhybridized and hybridized lobes on carbon that you have learned in previous classes. An example of a simple carbon compound with the sp3 hybridized carbon is methane. To visualize the molecule in three dimensions, one simply counts the groups on the central atom, which has four groups around the central atom employing a sp3 hybridized building block. The ideal bond angles are all 109.5 degrees. Due to all four equal in size hydrogen atoms attempting to get as far away from each other as possible to minimize repulsions, your instructor will often draw three dimensional methane on the blackboard as shown. Again, the two solid lines in this drawing are in the plane of the board, the wedge represents one of the hydrogen atoms coming out of the plane of the board, and the dash line represents one of the hydrogen atoms going back behind the plane of the board. The student should be able to mentally build and envision the molecule in three dimensions as shown. Here we see that the electron density is symmetrically located about an imaginary line that runs between the two adjacent nuclei. We call these four bonds sigma bonds. A simple carbon compound that utilizes sp2 carbons is ethylene. From the two-dimensional Lewis diagram, we see that each carbon forms three sigma bonds and one pi bond. To fold the molecule into three dimensions, one simply counts groups on the central atoms, which has three groups around each central atom. Thus, both carbons are sp2 hybridized. Your instructor may draw ethylene on the blackboard as shown, utilizing sp2 building blocks. We can begin to envision the molecule in three dimensions by starting with two sp2 hybridized building blocks, forming the cc sigma bond and the four carbon hydrogen sigma bonds, which affords the planar sigma bond framework for ethylene. Thus, all atoms are approximately 120 degrees apart. To form the second bond between the carbon atoms, called the pi bond, we can imagine that the two adjacent, parallel, unhybridized 2p atomic orbitals overlap, which is represented here by a solid line connecting the two lobes. To gain a better understanding of the pi bond, we should recall the actual size of the unhybridized 2p lobes. When we envision the actual shape of these orbitals, overlap between these adjacent 2p orbitals is possible which allows for the sharing of these two electrons affording each carbon full valency. However, it is very difficult to draw the molecule this way. Thus, you will often see the pi bond represented in abbreviated form. 
Here we see another common way your instructor may abbreviate the double bond by bending the 2p orbitals over to represent the overlap of the 2p orbitals. Utilizing the orbitals that arise out of hybridization theory can also help us realize why geometric isomers are isolable. Geometric isomers have the same gross connectivity but differ only in how the groups are oriented in space due to the hindered rotation about the doubly bonded carbons, which fall under the broad category of stereoisomers. When we draw an imaginary line along the axis of the double bond, and then compare groups on each carbon atom using the kahn ingold prelog priority rules, we can deduce which geometric isomer is present. The kahn ingold prelog priority rules are a simple set of rules to determine priority of groups attached to a double bond or a stereogenic atom based on atomic number. If the groups of priority are on the same side of a double bond, we call this the cis isomer, often abbreviated Z. Alternatively, the groups of priority can be on opposite sides of the imaginary line called the trans isomer, often abbreviated E. For interconversion of the isomers to occur, we need to have free rotation about the CC double bond. If this were to happen, it would mean that the pi bond would have to break, which requires approximately 70 kcals per mole. This will cause each carbon to lose full valency due to the 2p orbitals no longer overlapping. In other words, both carbon atoms will have only seven electrons instead of the desired octet, which will make the alkene unstable or higher in relative energy. Thus, at room temperature, geometric isomers are isolable. A simple carbon compound that utilizes sp carbons is ethyne or acetylene. From the two-dimensional Lewis diagram, we see that each carbon forms two sigma bonds and two pi bonds. To fold the molecule into three dimensions, one simply counts groups on the central atoms, which has two groups around each central atom. Thus, both carbons are sp hybridized. Your instructor will often draw ethyne in one of two ways on the whiteboard as shown, utilizing sp building blocks. Starting with two sp hybridized building blocks, we can begin to envision the molecule in three dimensions by forming the cc sigma bond and the two carbon hydrogen sigma bonds, which affords the linear sigma bond framework for acetylene with bond angles of 180 degrees, followed by the formation of the two pi bonds. Again, if we envision the actual shape of these 2p orbitals, overlap between the adjacent 2p orbitals are possible, which allows for the sharing of these two pairs of electrons affording full valency for each carbon atom. Clearly, it is very difficult to draw the molecule this way. Thus, you will often see the pi bonds represented in one of their abbreviated forms. Here again, we see another common way your instructor may abbreviate the triple bond by bending the 2p orbitals over to represent the overlap of adjacent 2p orbitals. A simple carbon compound that utilizes both sp3 and sp2 carbons is propylene. From the two-dimensional Lewis diagram, we see that by counting groups, we can deduce the hybridization for each carbon atom. Four groups employ the sp3 hybridized building block, and three groups employ the sp2 hybridized building block. Starting with one sp3 and two sp2 hybridized building blocks, we can start to build the molecule in three dimensions by forming the CC sigma framework. Next, the six carbon hydrogen sigma bonds are formed, followed by the pi bond, affording the final three dimensional molecule. Notice that the methyl group can spin freely about the CC sigma bond while the pi bond affords no rotation. A more thorough treatment of molecular geometry concepts and hybridization theory is available 